Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's do a more challenging example of how to apply the nodal analysis method to find the voltages and currents in a circuit. We still have two current sources. One is an independent current source and the other one is a dependent current source. The current through this branch is equal to twice the current through this branch and that's why this is labeled I sub X and I sub X. Notice we'll have three nodes, one here, one there and one there along with the node down here, which we're probably going to put at zero volts. We connect that to ground, but we still end up with three nodes, which means we're going to have three equations and three unknown voltages. That will require some more work, and I don't think we can put it all on the, on the board here at once. We probably need to do it in two separate videos, but let's see how far we get along. The method is exactly the same as before with the more simple examples. We start out with finding a reference node with known voltage, and to do that, we're going to connect this to ground, and put that at zero volts. The next step is to assign voltages to the three nodes that we have. So we call this V1, we call this V2, and we call this V3 for the three nodes that we have on the circuit that we need to determine the voltage for. The next thing we do is assign currents to each of the branches. Now we already have a current assigned to this branch, we'll call it I sub X. Let's call the current in this branch I1. The current through this branch, we'll call that I2, and the current through this branch, let's call that I3. So we'll have three additional currents besides I sub X. The next step is to apply the Kirchhoff current law to each of the nodes. Since we have three nodes, we're going to end up with three equations. What we're going to do is we're going to add up all the currents entering that node and set it equal to all the currents leaving the node. So for this node right here, for the first node, and since that's step number four, I'm going to label this step number four. We have three amps entering the node and I sub X and I sub I leaving. Therefore, three equals I sub X plus I sub one. That's our first equation. The second equation can be found by adding up all the currents on this node. We have I sub X entering, I sub two and I sub three leaving. I sub X then becomes I sub 2 plus I sub 3. And the third node right here, we have I sub 1 entering, I sub 2 entering, and this current leaving, which means that I sub 2 plus I sub 1 equals 2 I sub X. Now we have the three equations, but we have four unknown currents. We have I sub 1, I sub 2, I sub X and I sub 3. Therefore, using this null analysis method, we can, com we can combine this or we can rewrite this in terms of three voltages, three unknown voltages, instead of four unknown currents, which makes it a little bit easier to solve the problem. The next step is to define each of the currents using Ohm's law. Step number five, let's start with I1. I1 can be defined by the difference of these two voltages. V1 minus V3 divided by the resistance across that branch. So this is equal to V1 minus V3 divided by 4. Again, I take the voltage we're coming from and subtract from that the voltage we're going to, assuming that V3 is a lower quantity than V1 with current flowing that direction from higher to lower potential. I2, where is I2? Right there. I2 can be defined as the voltage across this branch which means V2 minus V3, again, the voltage where we're coming from to the voltage we're going to, divided by the resistance, in that case, 8 ohms. I3 can be defined as the voltage difference here, which is V2 minus 0, divided by the resistance, which is 4. And finally, I sub X can be defined as the difference between these two voltages, V1 minus V2, again, the voltage we're coming from to the voltage we're going to, divided by the resistance 2. We now found an equation to define each of the four unknown currents, and we'll then convert the, the three equations with four unknowns into three equations with just three unknowns, the three unknown voltages. Step five, oh, nope, that means that makes this step six. Step six is substitute the current definitions into these three equations to come up with three new equations only having voltages in them. The first equation becomes 3 is equal to I sub X and I sub X is V1 minus V2 
divided by 2 plus I sub 3, and I sub 3 is equal to V2 divided by 4. So that's our first equation converted to voltages from currents. The second equation, I sub X, can be defined as V1 minus V2 divided by 2, and that must equal I sub 2. I sub 2 is V2 minus V3 divided by 8. And I sub 1, uh, no, I sub 3 is V2 divided by 4 plus V2 divided by 4. Oh, let me reset here because I think I might have made a mistake. Let me go very careful here. First equation, 3 equals I sub X. I sub X is V1 minus V2 divided by 2. And I sub 1, I was looking at the wrong one here. I sub 1, instead of this, I will need V1 minus V3 divided by 4. I sub X is this. And I sub 1 is V1 minus V3 over 4. Good thing I caught that. The next one, the next equation is I sub X, which is V1 minus V2 divided by 2, equals I2, which is V2 minus V3 divided by 8, and plus I3, which is V2 divided by 4. And finally, the third equation is I2. I2 is V2 minus V3 divided by 8 equals V2, oh, no, no, hang on, I1. I1 is V1 minus V3, V1 minus V3 divided by 4, and we set that equal to 2 times I sub X, and I sub X is V sub 1 minus V sub 2 divided by 2. Then these two cancels out. I now have three equations, presumably they're correct, but I want to get rid of all these uh, denominators. That means I can multiply the top equation by 4. I multiply this equation by 8. And I multiply this equation by 8 as well. If I do that, I get rid of all the denominators and the equations will look a lot cleaner. So let me come up here and do that. The first equation, if I multiply times 4, I get 12 is equal to 2 goes into 4 twice, that ends up with 2v1 minus 2v2. And 4 divided by 4 is 1, that means we get plus v1 minus v3. So the first equation now has no denominators. The second equation, multiply everything by 8, 2 goes into 8 4 times, I get 4v1 minus 4v2 equals, 8 cancel out, I end up with a v2 minus a v3, and then 4 goes to 8 twice, plus 2 times v2. And the third equation, the 8th cancel out, I end up with v2 minus v3 equals, 4 goes into 8 twice, end up with 2v1 minus 2v3, and finally on the, ooh, I have too many equal signs, don't I? Oh, this is a little confusing. Maybe if I draw a line like this, it becomes easier to see. Here's the three equations. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. That's plus comes over here. And this is an equal sign over here. Equal. See if I get the second one right. Yep. And the first one right. Yep. All right. So that's a plus and an equal sign. So this becomes a plus. So V2 minus V3 plus 2V1 minus 2V3 equals... And here I have nothing in the denominator that gives me 8v1 minus 8v2. Now that I have gotten rid of the denominators, I want to set up a linear set of equations. So now I want to set up a linear set of equations and solve for the unknown voltages. To do that, I want to move all the v's, all the voltages to one side, all the numbers to the other side. So for those three equations, let's see what we get. Well, since all the voltages are here, I'm simply going to turn the equation around. 2V1 plus V1 is 3V1 minus 2V2 minus V3 is equal to, on the other side, we have a 12. So all I did was simply rotate the equation around. 
Here I can move everything over to the left side. I have a 4v1 here. Minus 4v2, bring that across, I'm at minus 5v2, bring that across, that's minus 7v2. Minus 7v2. And I have a minus v3 comes across, that becomes a plus v3. Equals, there's no constant, so set equal to zero. The third equation, I have a v1 on, here, on the left side and an 8v1 on the right side. If I bring that across, I get minus 6v1. I have a v2 and a minus 8v2. Bring that across, that's plus 9v2. I have a minus v3 and a minus 2v3. That's a minus 3v3, and that equals zero as well. And now I have three equations and three unknowns, which I can solve, any method I like, for the three unknowns, v1, v2, and v3. As I said before, there's a little bit of board space that's missing here. I don't think I have enough room to, to work all this out. So what I'm going to do is start a new video, bring this up here so we can start with that, and I'll show you the method that we're going to use to solve that. We're going to use Kramer's rules. We're going to use determinants. But since we have a 3 by 3, there's actually a pretty clever way in which we can do that. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Let's go back and review what we've done so far. Step 1, we found the reference voltage. Step 2, we assign voltages to the three nodes, V1, V2, V3. Step 3, assign currents to each branch. We already defined this branch as I sub X. That was given. We have an I sub 1, we have an I sub 2, and an I sub 3. The current in these two branches are defined. This is the dependent current source twice the current through this branch right here. There's an independent current source. Step four, apply the Kirchhoff current loop or current law uh, to each of the nodes. So we have three nodes, which end up, we end up with three equations. Let's check to make sure we did this correctly. All the currents entering, the three amps, equal all the currents leaving, which is I sub X and I sub one. On the second node, we have I sub X entering, I sub 2 and I sub 3 leaving. And on the third node, we have I sub 1 and I sub 2 entering and twice I sub X leaving. So that all looks pretty good. Next, we need to define the currents in terms of the voltages. I1 can be defined as the voltage difference, V1 minus V3 divided by the resistance 4 ohms. I2 can be defined as the voltage difference, V2 minus V3, divided by the resistance, 8 ohms. I3 can be defined as V2 minus 0, divided by the resistance, 4. And I sub X can be defined as V1 minus V2, divided by the resistance, 2. Remember, the difference in voltage is always the voltage we're coming from to the voltage we're going to. Presumably, it's going to be a lower voltage voltage drop. Next, we're going to substitute I1, I2, I3, and I sub X in those three equations to come up with these equations. That's the tricky part. Let's make sure we did that correctly. Three equals I sub X, V1 minus V2 divided by 2, plus I sub 1, which is V1 minus V3 divided by 4. The next equation, I sub X, is V1 minus V2 divided by 2, equals I sub 2, which is V2 minus V3 divided by 8, and I sub 3, which is V2 minus 0, divided by 4. The third equation, I sub 2, is V2 minus V3 divided by 8. I sub 1, which is V1 minus V3 divided by 4. We add those together. Where am I here? Those two, we add them together. Equals twice I sub X. Two times I sub X is V1 minus V2 divided by 2. The twos cancel. The next step is to get rid of all the denominators. Multiply this times the largest denominator, 4, the largest denominator, 8, the largest, 8. We multiply this by 4, we get 12 equals 2v1 minus 2v2, the force cancel out, v1 minus v3. Here, 2 goes into 8 4 times, we get 4v1 minus 4v2 equals v2 minus v3 plus twice v2. And finally here, the a's cancel out, v2 minus v3 plus twice v1 minus v3. V3 equals 8V1 minus 8V2. And finally, combining all the like terms, here we have a 2V1 and a V1, that's 3V1, a minus 2V2, a minus V3 right here, and that is equal to 12. We simply turn the equation around. The second equation, we moved all the Vs to the left side, 4V1, just have one of those, minus 4V2, minus 
another V2 that's minus 5, minus 7, V2. V3 was negative here, comes across, becomes a positive V3, no constants. The final equation, 2V1 minus 8V1, when we bring it across, that's a minus 6V1. We have 1V2 and a minus 8V2 comes across, becomes a plus 8V2, together it's 9V2. Minus V3, minus 2V3 is a minus 3V3 equals 0. It looks like we are on track to do this correctly. So in the next video, we're going to take that and show you how to solve for, that, for those three equations, those three unknowns and three, three equations, using Kramer's rule and determinants. And that's how it's done.